HD Smartcast. You are listening to a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. This is Neil Borate from Mint's personal finance team. State government bonds are becoming increasingly popular among debt fund managers. A number of target maturity funds have been launched focusing on state government bonds. Are these bonds completely risk free? And if not, what are the risks associated with them? Our guest today, Sandeep Yadav, head of fixed income at DSP Mutual Fund, will explain. Hi, welcome to Why Not Mint Money, a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started on your money journey. Sandeep, so how do state government bonds compare with their GSEC counterparts? So Neil, the state government bonds usually go at a higher yield than the GSEC. That has historically been the case. The yield spread between, a, let's say, a 10-year state government bond as well and a GSEC would be some anywhere between 30 to 100 base point looking at the history for the last 10 years. And uh, it is currently at the lower end of the band. Currently, we are around 40 base point. But by and large, right. it fluctuates between these two levels. Right, Sandeep, so just to clarify to our readers, uh, when you say there's a 40 basis point differential, it would mean that if uh, the yield on the uh, GSEC is 6%, then the state government uh, bond would yield 6.4%. Absolutely, and to give a current instance, currently GSEC yields are at around 690, uh, 6.9011, 11 and you'll see state government bond yields closer at around 7 quarter to 7.30%. So you get the higher yield, um, but in return for this higher return, what are the risks? So if we can first look at default risk, is there any default risk at all with state government bonds? That's a very interesting question, Neil. So while state uh, loans are treated as sovereign, they're not really as risk-free as a central government bond. Implicitly, people believe that default risk of SDLs is zero, uh, but different states have different financial profile, and this leads to different uh, default risk between them, even if it is very uh, low. So there are two reasons why the default risk is firstly low. First, uh, first there's a constitutional backing where the central government may opt to pitch in to give money to the states. Of course, with some few riders uh, which are put on the states. And secondly, Reserve Bank of India maintains some consolidated funds that can be used to pay the state liabilities. So while these reduce the risks of the states uh, considerably, but they do not make it zero. And I think the proof of the pudding is when we look at the markets, how they treat the state bonds. So the risk is reflected in the firstly, the high yields of SDLs, which I just mentioned in the earlier question. And secondly, even if we uh, look at the higher yield, this high yield is despite the fact that the regulations treats SDLs, that is state loans and government securities at parity. So the high yield is not because there are some regulatory constraints. So even if uh, banks are, for banks, the SDLs and GSEX are at the same risk, but still uh, there's a differential in the yield curve, largely reflecting the credit profile. Right. So Sandeep, if you would look at history, has any state in India defaulted on its debt in the past? No, it hasn't been. In fact, uh, I don't think we have come close to a state default so far. So that takes care of one kind of risk, uh, which is default risk. But of course, there is interest rate risk. Um, so could you explain right. how that, that works uh, for our listeners? So largely the interest rate risk of SDLs and a normal GSEC or any other bond is quite similar. As I mentioned, the differential of the uh, as spread between a government security and an SDL can keep on changing, but by and large, uh, the interest rate risks and the duration risks are quite similar to a government security risk. What I would also like to highlight over here is that SDLs are much lesser liquid than government security. And this, thus they might carry a little bit more illiquidity risk, if not interest risks per se. And uh, which anyway is, is part of the pricing as well. So you'll see a part of the higher uh, asset spread between state loans and GSA is part is because of the credit risk and part is because of the illiquidity risks in those SDLs. Right. But uh, in terms of liquidity, how big an issue is it? Uh, most people invest in state government bonds through mutual funds uh, and considering the size of the market, etc. For the individual, is that much of an issue? 
Absolutely not, Neil. While uh, when I say there's a liquidity premium in government securities, but we are not talking about uh, we are not talking about uh, illiquid credit risks, you know, which are very difficult to uh, to liquidate. So state governments are nowhere close to that. So they are, when I say there's a liquidity risk, I'm just comparing it with government securities. But if you're looking at individual investors, then re there really is not that much of a liquidity risk because at a price you'll be easily able to sell the state loans. Now, uh, a lot of mutual funds have been launching target maturity funds which invest in state government bonds. Um, and these are generally uh, in the five or seven year range. Is there a reason for this? Are, are yields maximum in, in this kind of tenure? Absolutely, Neil. So the yields are quite high till about six years, seven years. And suddenly after that, the yield differential for every uh, year going forward is much lesser. So that is why most of the mutual funds are launching uh, in that five to seven year bucket, uh, these target maturity funds, as you mentioned. And if you go beyond, uh, let's say, six or seven years, suddenly the interest rate risk of the uh, of the fund increases substantially, which probably is not being is not being compensated by the higher yield because the yield curve flattens out after six, seven years. So you're absolutely right. That is at the probably at the best point in the curve right now. In my opinion, I might add. Sure. But also, I suppose by by implication, uh, somebody has a very short term time horizon, then uh, maybe a STL target maturity fund is not for them. Um, now, finally, coming to, um, there have been you know, a lot of headlines and news reports on the finances of some states. For an investor, uh, is it worthwhile to look at the portfolio of a mutual fund and and you know, are there states that we should worry about? So, Neil, I would not say states to worry about, but yes, it is uh, prudent, in, uh, especially when you're investing, it is prudent to be at least cognizant of the risks and know um, the risks that you're taking and the underlying risks in the investments you're making. That does not mean that you avoid that risk necessarily. It depends on the risk profile of the people, but that does mean that while you're investing, you should be cognizant of the uh, of the underlying portfolio. So, you know, as I mentioned earlier, markets differentiate between SDLs and GSEC, and that is reflected in the high yields of the SDLs. Similarly, markets differentiate between state loans from different states. So, right. some of the states which might have a little bit more vulnerable fiscal profile will usually go cheaper than the states which have got better fiscal profile. And this is despite the fact that the implied assurances which I mentioned earlier given by the central government and the Reserve Bank of India are similar for all the states. So when you look at it, when the assurances are similar, then why do some states go at a higher yield than other states? So this further reinforces that uh, it probably may be, uh, so when investors are investing in funds, it probably is good to uh, not paint all the states with the same picture and probably right. look at the investment portfolio as well. Okay. Thank you so much, Sandeep. Thank you so much, Neil. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions about this episode, you can reach out to me on Twitter at ActusDei. That's A-C-T-U-S-D-E-I. Or you can email us at mintmoney at livemint.com. This was a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. HD Smartcast.